a brazen act of terrorism, rampant anti-Semitism. I sit down with my special guest panel to see if these are just the latest breaking headlines or a possible sign of the end times. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Increasing calamity. A great deception. One world government. Millions vanish. A cult-like leader rises. Discover the truth about the end. War in the Middle East, protests around the world, rising anti-Semitism. Are these simply a product of global politics or do they point to something else? And is there a deeper significance to what we see happening today. Well, with the help of our special guest panel today, we're going to find out. Joining me around the table is Pastor Lee Cummings. Welcome. So good to be here, Joni. You've been talking about this. I've watched you some online at your church. Yeah, yeah. And people are very interested, aren't they? Yeah, it's incredible uh, the response that we've had. People are just looking for answers. They want to know what's going on yeah. and what the Bible has to say about it. And I do appreciate your stand for Israel. Thank you. That's another thing you're talking about, pastors that don't have the sorry guts to really speak the truth concerning yeah. this. There's a lot of silence, and there it's is. pretty loud. It really is. Yeah. Pastor Russell Johnson, all the way from Seattle, Washington, welcome back to the table. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. You're just right in the middle of the fray. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> he always is. And you just had... Yeah, a friend named Masab Hassan Youssef, whose father is the founder of Hamas. Wow. And he's had a born-again experience, was baptized follower of Jesus, and now is really one of the leading voices in support of Israel and the Jewish people wow. traveling around the world. And we were lucky to be able to host him in person in Seattle just for an incredible night. Oh, wow. I want to hear more about that. Rachel Lamb Brown, how are you? I am so honored to be at this table. <laughs> you are. <laughs> These are some of my favorite people, and this conflict and what's going on in our world is, is so interested, interesting. We need to unpack it, and so I'm glad that we're going to get to do that today. We are. Cindy Murdoch, you're always ready to learn more so about what's ready, going on. I am so ready, and I'm so thankful that the people have an opportunity to get truth yeah. from experts that have studied and studied, besides just what the media is sharing, because they right. aren't able to te tell the truth from the history. That's true. It's true. Lance Wall now. Well, this is so exciting to be back here. Always at a historic time, it seems. It's always a, this is like a real boundary event. There are events that happen in prophetic history yeah. that mark an ending of an era and the beginning of an era, and this is the right place to have that conversation. Yeah. Larry Hug, welcome to the table. Thank you. I think my first time to the table. Your oh, first wow. time I to the table. I think so. And we're <laughs> excited that you're here. Well, imagine being asleep in your house when suddenly armed gunmen burst in, drag you out into the street. Now imagine having to watch in horror as they attack and kill those closest to you. This is the unforgettable reality that Israeli families experienced at the hands of Hamas on October 7th. Take a look. Sinister plan to shatter peace and create terror. A night of evil and cruelty that would shake a nation and divide the world. On October 7th, as communities all over Israel slept, a vicious, unprovoked, and coordinated attack by Hamas left in its wake a trail of fatal devastation. Civilian homes invaded women raped, people brutalized, hostages taken, even babies beheaded, families found embracing each other lifeless. As the world awoke to the disturbing images of Hamas's brutality and their celebration of death and destruction, many were left with the question, is this the cost of land for peace? Well, it was an attack that has been seared into the minds of the Jewish people and those around the world that stand with Israel. And it seems to mark a turning of the page and shifting into a new reality. Could this be pointing to bigger future events? Well, today we're going to talk about that with our panel. Before we get into that, Pastor Larry, uh, welcome to the table. Thank you. And uh, we were there at your church Sunday. Yes, ma'am. And you, uh, you, just like Daystar, we have been supporters of Israel yeah. for years. Yeah. 
I know there are people jumping on board now, but we've been yeah. sending support yeah. over there for years. Yeah. Done a lot of humanitarian stuff to let the Israeli people know that we love them and stand with them. So um, help us understand Palestine. I know there's a lot of people that have written in and said, you know, you know, we see all these protests and, you know, what about the Palestinian people and what about that land and who does it really belong to and what is the history? Yeah. So could you take us through that quickly and, yeah, and help very, understand? Yeah, very briefly, we're hearing in all the protests uh, 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 from the river to the sea. Well, that's not a new uh, uh, protest slime that came from uh, Yasser Arafat when he decided we're going to make the Palestinian people we're going to give them a flag we'll give them that was in 1964 up until 1964 there's never been a Palestinian flag a Palestinian state a Palestinian government that is all made up by people who are anti-semitic and when we go back to the history all of the world there was never anything in any christian doctrine whether it's the apostles creed or whatever anything blaming the jews for killing jesus for 325 years constantine the roman empire said how do we get the christian church to turn away from Jerusalem, turn their back on Israel, and pray towards Rome. And they said, let's blame the Jews for killing Jesus. So go all the way back to the time when Rome killed Jesus, 132 years after Jesus died and was resurrected, there was a revolt, and once again, the Roman Empire could not break Israel. They could break them physically, they couldn't break them spiritually. And so Hadrian said, in anger, and, and, and the Roman Empire was ruling the world then. They said, we're going to remove the name of Israel. We're going to remove the name of Judea from every book, every map, and we're going to call it Palestine. Even though and it was Israel. Even though it was Israel. Okay. It was out of hatred for the, the Israeli people, the Jewish people. And they named it Palestine after the Philistines, which were an enemy we know of David and Goliath. The Philistines were an enemy of Israel, which were a small portion of land mm -hmm. on the Egyptian-Israeli border. Very, very small. Kind of like the size of what we see uh, um, the Gaza Strip as. Mm -hmm. The Philistines weren't even Arab. They weren't Muslim. They weren't Arab. They were descendants from Greece. And so this whole concept that there has always been a, a Philistine people, a Palestine, is is false concept. Mm -hmm. Then when we got towards 1948, when Israel was becoming a nation, the Arabs put the pressure on the world through oil, through money, through finances, and so nobody else's land was shrunk. Picture this whole table as the Arab nations. Take a pen and draw a dot, an ink dot, in the middle of that. Here is the Arab nations, that ink dot is, is Israel. And so in 1960, 1948, all of the Arab nations fought Israel, Israel won. 67, they fought Israel, Israel won. 73, they fought Israel, Israel won. So the Palestinian people hired a firm out of New York and they said, We're, the world sees this big Arab nations fighting against this little Israel. Their Goliath and Israel is David. And the PR firm out of New York, which doesn't exist anymore because God said, I will bless those who bless Israel and I will curse those yes. who curse Israel, yes. said, you've got to make the Palestinian people the victim. Instead of all of this Arab nation fighting against Israel, let's make it big Israel fighting against the West Bank, the Palestinian so people. So what origin are the Palestinian people that are on the West Bank right now or Gaza Strip? 90% of them are from Jordan. They came in when, when in 1948, 1949 war, they came in from Jordan and Jordan pushed the Israelis people back. The people came in and they, and they settled in there. So when you look at, and, and people always talk about the green line. The green line is no, is no legal term. It's no official term. It's no international term. When, after the war, when Israel defeated again, they sat in a room and they took a green marker. That's where the green line came from. They took a green marker and said, okay, here's where the Jordanians are. Here's where the Israelis are. Let's have a ceasefire. And somehow the world has taken that into, well, this is no longer Judea and Samaria. This is now the West Bank. 
That's not a legal thing. That's not a, a, a thing that Israel agreed on, but they wanted to have peace with the Palestinian people. And so they agreed. You know, people are always, uh, and Biden administration is saying, well, we're calling for a ceasefire. He's not calling a ceasefire. He's calling for a pause. And you see all these protests, ceasefire, ceasefire. There was a ceasefire. Right. Up until October 7th, there was a ceasefire. And once again, just like in 1948, 1967, 1973, Israel did not attack anybody. Israel was attacked, and it's time for that enemy to be removed. Well, you know, speaking of that, you know, many are calling, like you said, for a ceasefire from Israel, and it begs the question if they really understand what's at stake. Here, and you show this at your church, is a Hamas spokesperson revealing what their intent is. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the spirit of Amalek. But let's, let's just look. Take a look. Listen to what he's saying. Israel is a country that has no place on our land. We must remove that country because it constitutes a security, military, and political catastrophe to the Arab and Islamic nation and must be finished. We are not ashamed to say this with full force. We must teach Israel a lesson, and we will do this again and again. The Alaska flood is just the first time, and there will be a second, a third, a fourth because we have the determination, the resolve, and the capabilities to fight. The occupation must come to an end. Occupation where? In the Gaza Strip? No, I am talking about all the Palestinian lands. Does that mean the annihilation of Israel? Yes, of course. The existence of Israel is what causes all that pain, blood, and tears. It is Israel, not us. We are the victims of the occupation, period. Therefore, nobody should blame us for the things we do. On October 7th, October 10th, October 1 million, everything we do is justified. That was one of the main leaders of Hamas, and he spoke spoke that about seven, eight days ago, somewhere around there, uh, and I know that's time uh, dating this, but he spoke it on live Lebanese television. And part of it we didn't see is the lady said, he said, we're going to do this again and again and again and again, October 7th, October 10th, October a millionth, we're going to do it again. And she said, until they release the land, he said, we don't want land for peace. We want the Jews pushed into the ocean. And so the spirit of Amalek, what is that? Explain who that was and what that is. The exactly. Amalekites were the tribe when the Israelites came out of Egypt. They were heading towards the promised land. They weren't even headed towards their land. And the Amalekites came, and it's interesting, the Bible said they attacked the elderly, the weak, the children, the women. Exactly what happened on October 7th. That's, wow. that's, that's why I hate when we hear the media say, well, these militants. Militants means soldiers against soldiers. These butchers did not attack Soldiers, they attacked women. And I, I'm, I'm on the phone every morning, like 4, 4.30 in the morning with Israel. And I've seen videos that I'll never get out of my mind. I'll never get those videos out of my mind. What these people did for no other reason except these are Jewish people. So the Bible says that we will, they will fight the spirit of Amalek just because they hate Jews until the coming of the Messiah. But uh, I love how it ends. It says, but, the, this, but Amalek will be destroyed from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that this is not a war about borders. This is a war about barbarism and, and civilization, and it's a spiritual war. So you mentioned, uh, I know earlier in Church Sunday, about the difference in the strategy and talking about wars that uh, you know that have taken place, the war with Germany, right. uh, with Japan, et cetera. And you said, you know, when there's a ceasefire and when there's a treaty, mm -hmm. then you don't keep on hating people from that country. Exactly. But the spirit of Amalek will never die. And the hatred will never cease, and the destruction will never cease in their minds as well. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. And, and once again, when we're talking about the spirit of Amalek, we're not talking about a people. We're talking about a spirit. And the Bible says we battle not with flesh and blood, but we do battle with principalities and yes. powers and rulers of darkness. Who could do this to people? And who would say, as this man did, whatever it costs us, we'll strap bombs to our children's chest. We'll have them walk onto a bus. We'll have them walk into a bar mitzvah. And we will celebrate our children dying just so Jews can die. The spirit of Amalek was the same spirit that's on Hitler. When The reason why Hitler lost the war was not because of bombs and bullets. Hitler lost the war because he made the same mistake Napoleon made when he went against Russia during the winter. And when he was going up, when they went up there, the troops were starving and they were freezing. His generals, this is the spirit of Amalek. It's not about borders, it's about 
killing God from the face of the earth. And, and Hitler's generals came to him and said, listen, we can win this. Stop sending Jews in the trains to the death camps. Start using those trains to bring, stop sending troops to kill Jews. Use those trains to bring troops, to bring supplies, to bring food, and bring it up to the uh, Russian front, and we can win this war. And Hitler was furious, and he yelled at them, and he said, you don't understand what this war is about. This war is not about winning. This war is about killing Jews. And when we're done with the Jews, we're coming after the Christians. So this war of standing with Israel, Americans in the world need to understand this is a spiritual battle. And the spirit of Amalek is the spirit of the Antichrist. It's the spirit of anti-God. And if we don't stand up and say something, and, and, and people are, I think, I hope, I pray, Joni, that people's eyes are being opened up when they're marching by the thousands in Australia and shouting, gas the Jews, when they're coming at our capital, you know, it, it blows my mind that if you're a Trump supporter, you're a domestic terrorist. If you're a parent that stands up in a PTA meeting and says, you're not teaching this garbage to our kids, you're a domestic terrorist. If you're a dad who comes and said, you allowed boys dressed like girls into the girls' restroom and raped my daughter, you're a domestic terrorist. But we can't say that these people who are shouting death to Jews and killed two Jewish people so far, we're not labeling them as domestic terrorists. We better wake up because if we're not at the end, we're extremely close to the coming of the Messiah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because, yes. you know, with Israel's strong response following, of course, the Hamas attacks of October 7th, just like Larry said, many have taken to the streets, yeah. not only protesting Israel, but also calling for its destruction. Let's watch this. Why are you are taking off our poster so, of right, people that were kidnapped? Thank you very much for coming to the they were kidnapped by Hamas. Why are you doing that? Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're taking a, a, oh. That is my cousin. Girl. That is my cousin. Okay. It's children, it's innocent people. Okay, what about the children in Palestine? Why are you what? taking down pictures of missing children? Do you feel good about doing this? I feel actually this gives me so much joy. Pro Palestinian protesters storm a New York college. They head for the seventh floor library at the famed Cooper Union. Then they pound on the doors, threatening 11 Jewish students who have sought sanctuary, locking themselves inside. They can see protesters waving wooden sticks and anti-Semitic posters at the library window. Well, it's really unbelievable. Pastor Lee Cummings, I want to hear your comments. Yeah, I think uh, this has been eye-opening for a lot of people, and hopefully especially the church in America. Sometimes we can, you know, America has had wars that have that we participated in, but it's always on the other side of the ocean. And this is something that the rise of anti-Semitism and Jew hatred, let's call it what it is, yeah. is not something that is just taking place on the other side of the world. It's actually yeah. happening in our cities. It's revealing what's been happening behind the barbed wires of the concentration camps of the American American University, mm -hmm. where our young people are being brainwashed, not only intellectually, but spiritually. Yes. And we're seeing this rise of anti-Semitism that makes absolutely no logical sense, especially in a culture that emphasizes tolerance and acceptance and intersectionality. It's like the only people you're allowed to hate are Christians and Jews. Sure. And it ought to cause us to really stop and step back and go, this really is, this really is a battle about borders, but it's spiritual borders. It's the borders between yeah. the kingdom of God and God's will and the enemy's kingdom or his realm of darkness. And that's what this is. You know, um, you had a rabbi, Pastor Larry, at church Sunday, and he talked about the barbarians. 
And he said, we see the barbarians as the Hamas and, of course, Hezbollah, yes. But there are other barbarians that are right on the college campuses. And who are they? Yeah, and, and, there, and you know, we have a national law here in America that if you come in at, on a visa and teach in a university and you promote violence, you promote terrorism, you promote hate speech, that you are immediately removed, not only from that university, but you're removed from our country. And yeah. we are not seeing uh, the Biden administration or these universities step up and say, we will not tolerate. And as Pastor said, we live in a society that says, we gotta tolerate this, we gotta tolerate that. But here we have Jewish students because students were taught by professors to hate the Jewish people, to hate Jews, not just in Israel, and these are around our professional, the world. These are our professional barbarians. The ones these are that, professional barbarians. That, that are the, the, the uh, professors that, that yeah. are proud to present this false narrative to, and teach these students. Then you see the very thing we just saw. We're putting a list together of every university that's allowed this to happen, of every professor that is teaching this type of thing, of every business that is supporting these universities and not pulling their funds away. And thankfully, we're seeing a lot of them pull their funds away. Yes. And every yes. politician that is not speaking up. Talk about professional barbarians. We have people in, in, in Washington, D.C. that are flying pro-Palestinian uh, flags, and one even said, when I think about the Holocaust, it made me feel warm inside. How in the world has these people become leaders wow, in our nation? Right. And, 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 and I, as I said Sunday, and I say every Sunday, when it comes voting, you, you, you're not voting Republican, you're not voting right. Democrat, you're not voting Jew, you're not voting Gentile, you're voting as a child of God, and we better come voting That's time, true. make our voices heard. Uh, Pastor Russell, you've been involved in the political arena. What are your comments on all this? Yeah, you know, I really think Israel is not just a test of our theology, it's a test of our humanity. And when national events happen like this, it reveals the things that we hold to be true and how we believe about the events around us. It has never been more important for believers to be discipled by the Word of God instead of discipled by the mainstream media. And, uh, you know, one of our church campuses is located right on Frat Row, two blocks from the University of Washington. And some of these pro-Hamas demonstrations that you have seen have taken place on our university campus. And I think it's so important in this hour for the church to let the world know that there is actually another voice coming out of some of these coastal cities that are known for, you know, clearly a slant towards anti-Semitic belief and theology, that there are people who still stand up in support of God's people and in defense of the Jewish right to exist. As Pastor Larry mentioned, you know, October 7th was the greatest loss of life for the Jewish people in a single day since right. the Holocaust. Wow. It's a different decade, but it's the same, same demon. Yeah. These are winds of doctrine that travel around the earth looking for a place to land. And, you know, our elected officials should hang their heads in shame that they have allowed pro-terrorist support rallies yes. to happen on the campuses of our state-funded universities. Right. It's absolutely criminal that these things are happening. And it's never been more important for the church to figure out if we're gonna stand not just on the right side of history, but on the right side of eternity. And something that concerns me, Joni, mm. is not just the anti-Semitic bent that you're seeing in the university classrooms or in the public policy space with our elected officials. If we wanna be honest, we have anti-Semitic theology in the church. Yes. And we have pastors and leaders who are not well-framed in their understanding. They haven't read Romans 11. They don't have proper theology on the end times. And in doing so, they give tactile support to those who have positioned themselves in demonic resistance against Israel and the Jewish people, and I will not stand for it. Yeah. Come on. Lance. Well, you know, to put this in perspective, Pastor Larry gave some great illustrations about, like, Israel's in the middle of this table here, or a, a corner of a football field. Imagine if 2,500 ISIS underground killers came out and attacked Washington, D.C., and in the middle of the day, they start taking children and beheading them and raping women in front of their husbands. And then they dragged off 200 hostages to Baltimore. Gaza City is only 45 miles from Jerusalem. It's 50 miles from Tel Aviv. We don't really realize it's 
it's Baltimore to Washington. So to the Jewish people, they're looking at this like a terror organization has taken over a government. It's only 45 miles away. They're going to deal with this thing once and for all. The, the, whole, the whole language of so solutions is irrelevant when you're dealing with ISIS and 2,500 killers that have taken... Well, I would like to know how the media has covered up this one angle. How many U.S. hostages are there that are being held right now by Hamas? I want to see the students that are supporting Hamas mm. cheering against United States citizens That's being right. hostage and, <laughs> and cheering for their captors. Because this, you talk about a PR nightmare, they're about to run into it. The Democratic Party is not held together by evangelicals, this we know. So where's the support for Israel, evangelicals? And Jewish donors, now they got a problem. Because the moderate Jewish donors are the people that prop up the Democratic Party. And the reason why the Democrats are standing so strong with Israel is because their whole party will fragment. Their radical left is on the streets promoting craziness. And the Jewish donors are saying, you better not right. buckle on this well, one. For the first time, though, the, the Jewish donors are waking up yes. because they've been quite liberal. In this, this is what makes the moment so interesting to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're waking up. They are, they are, they are, and we are out of time. This has been so interesting. Ooh, yes. What is your one word before we leave? I know you've got a lot over there. I have so many questions. <laughs> we had to continue. We're going to continue on yes. another show, but this is just shocking, oh my isn't it, to hear? It is so shocking, but I am so grateful for what we're hearing at yeah, the table and I, today. Yeah, and I really hope that those of you watching, Pastor Larry gave such a, a, a great history lesson on that land of where it started and what, who named it and, and, and understanding and, and the narrative that you're hearing people say on the street, they don't even know what they're talking about. Exactly. But uh, we are out of time and I want you to remember that nothing that's happening in our world is a surprise to God. And he alone has already determined the victory for his people. We know the end of the story and we win. Okay, Israel will not be blown off the map. Israel will stand. So don't let the enemy cause you to be in fear or walk in fear. This is one of the greatest hours for us to be alive and for us to share the good news of the gospel. So be bold. Stand on God's promises and stand up for truth and do it in a loving way. When you watch these videos, these protests, it is demonic. I mean, you can see you can actually see demonic forces that are driving people to do and say things to kill people, innocent people. A 69-year-old man, Paul Kessler, I believe was his name there in California, standing with, a, with an Israeli flag and uh, a, a Palestinian protester hit him with a megaphone. He fell to the ground, hit his head, and died. They said his wife was shocked perfectly healthy. It's crazy. Well, if you're watching today, you need prayer for peace, boldness, encouragement. Maybe you don't know Jesus. I'm telling you, that is the most important message I can share with you today. And uh, maybe you've tried everything else. How, why not just pray that simple prayer and say, Jesus, I need you in this moment, in this, in this hour. I need you to come in and be Lord of my life. Forgive me. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, you just call out on the name of the Lord. He will meet you wherever you are. You can, of course, call that toll-free number on the screen. I'd love to send you a, a free book entitled, Now What? If you prayed that prayer or if you want someone to pray that prayer with you. But I'm telling you, you have been assigned this season to live in the world today. And God wants to use you to be a blessing. So don't Hide your, bury your head in the sand. It's time to get out there and allow the Spirit of God to lead you and, and reach out to those people that are around you, those people you work with. And uh, I'm telling you, it will be life-changing. Well, I want to thank our special panel for joining us today. For more from Lance, you can visit him online at lancewallnell.com. He's always got a lot going on. To find out more about Larry's ministry, go to larryhuckministries.com. All these are just powerhouses. You can get more on Russell's ministry at thepursuitnw.com. Great church up there in Seattle. And for all the latest from Lee, another great church, be sure to check out leecummings.com. And if today's Table Talk touched your life, leave us a comment uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, I'm so excited about what God is doing. This doesn't cause me to be fearful. This causes me to get excited because I see end time events taking place that are in the word of God. And we know that God is in control. So be encouraged today, stand up for truth. And uh, just like Pastor Larry, he said it over and over, you gotta really pray and vote for the right people to be in office for this time and this season. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you, ladies. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.